Hello, it's Karen Berniston here with my monthly designer challenge video. The theme this month is vacation. And the pop-up die I'm using is our flip frame pop-up. And I'm going to be showing a technique where it can be doubled and used on both sides of the fold. Now that's a very generic technique. I've decided to decorate it in a cruise theme, but you could certainly take this technique and use it for any theme. I've decided to make a five by seven card. So I started with a piece of cardstock, 10 inches by seven inches and scored it in the center for folding. And then to the card's interior, I decorated that by cutting pattern paper with the largest rectangle out of our new rectangles and labels crosshatch set. Now that pattern paper is just an older one from my stash. I'm switching now to the pop-up die, which is our die called flip frame pop-up. And it has this piece, which is the pop-up mechanism. And in that piece are three score lines. And all three of those score lines fold in the same direction. So for a typical installation, you would do mountain folds on all three, meaning you're folding away from yourself. So I'm going to do that for the one that will be installed for the left side of the card. But I'm going to double this, so I'm going to do a second mechanism, and this time all three folds are going to be valley folds, which means I'm folding toward myself. So I'm basically making mirror image pieces by working those folds in opposite directions. The first one with mountains, the second one with valleys. Now if I turn that valley fold version over, it's going to have mountain folds but oriented for the right side of the card. Okay, since I'm going cruising, I'm going to take the Waves Edger from our Tropical Scene die set and I'm going to cut the top edge of my mechanism into that Waves pattern. So after running that through my die cutting machine, and you can use any die cutting machine that can accommodate a wafer thin die, now I work those folds again and you can see that I have the mechanism, but it has a wavy edge to the top. Then I'm going to repeat that now with the second one cutting the wave's edge into the top of the left side mechanism. And again, after working those folds, I still have my mechanism in place, but it has that decorative edge. All right, time to add my mechanisms inside the card. And I'll start with the one on the right. Now, I love glue for this. I'm using my Lineco Neutral pH Adhesive in my fine tip bottle. We do sell both of those items on our website. Now I'm going to flip that small tab over. I've added the adhesive and I'm going to butt the end right up into the fold of the card. So I like to lift the fold to make sure that I don't cross it, but I want to come right up to the fold with that small tab. So this is the right side mechanism, but I'm installing the small tab on the left side of the fold. The flat position of this mechanism is when the second fold is folded flat, not just the first fold. So see the first fold, that would not be correct. Do the second fold so that you've got two panels up and it is only the upper or outside panel that gets the adhesive. So I'm going to add my strong adhesive just to that outer tab. Let me show that a little closer. Then I wanna keep everything nice and flat while I close the right side of the card against that exposed adhesive. And then once I've given it a second to set up, I can carefully open the card, make sure that that tab has attached to the right side of the card. I can even go in there and give it a good press Make sure that I have very good connection on my two tabs. And then you can see that little mechanism is working great. For the left side mechanism, I'm not going to build it on the center fold of the card. And that's just because I really don't want those two mechanisms to get tangled in the closed position. Instead, I'm going to move it up here and build it against the first mechanism. So I'll add my adhesive all over my small tab. And then as I lift this up, you can see that the first mechanism has essentially created a new card fold right up here that I can build a pop-up on. So the end of the small tab is butted right up to the card, but it's actually attached to the first mechanism. Okay, and this process is a little more fiddly because now I'm basically trying to find a flat position while the other side has already popped up. So it's the second fold that I need to work, and that is the flat position. Then I need my adhesive all over just the outer tab. And now I kind of have to figure out how to close this card and have it find the flat position. So I'm kind of kind of bend the card front back and just close from both sides at the same time. And then that should locate that closed position for me, the flat position for that second mechanism. And once again, I can go in there after opening it and give it a really good press, make sure that I have a good connection on that tab. 
Okay, so now I have my doubled up flip frame mechanism and it is ready for some decoration. Okay, back to my waves edger again, because I want to get some longer strips of waves that I can extend the pop-up outward into the card. And that will allow me to add items out on the ends where they won't crash into each other in the closed position. So some adhesive on the pop-up. I've got my waves face down. Then I'm going to close the card, give it a second for that glue to set up, and then that pop-up is going to pick up those waves and lift them up when the card opens. Same exact process on the other side. So my waves go face down, adhesive on the front face of the pop-up, butt it right up to the base of that pop-up and close the card. And then that will pick up those waves into the popped up position. Now these angles are not the same because remember the left side pop-up is attached to the right side pop-up. So they're not exactly mirror image. You can see that they have different angles on either side. I felt like that light blue cardstock was a little too lightweight to hold up my big cruise ship. So I decided to strengthen it and add decoration by adding another strip of waves, this time using the scalloped stitched edger out of that same tropical scene set. I'm going to be using our cruise charm die set and I'm taking inspiration from the cruise ship charm to make a bigger version for my card. For the bottom half of the ship, I'll use our crosshatch hexagons. So I'll use the largest crosshatch and then the next one down. The smaller of the two dies, I will cut completely out of white, but then on the larger one, I really just need a pointed end. So that's the crosshatch one that I'm cutting out of red. Okay, step one is going to be to fold the white hexagon right up the middle between two points. Then I'll just take my scissors and cut off the bottom point. So just cutting from corner to corner. Now I'm going to fold in the center again. And on that square corner, I'm going to take off a triangle. So I'm just gonna cut through both layers, cutting a triangle off of that side so that when I open it up, I have this shape. The red crosshatch hexagon, the partial one I cut, is going to create the border at the top. So I just need to isolate just the crosshatch section of that red hexagon. Then I can glue that to the white one. Anything that hangs off the edges, I can just trim off with my scissors. Okay, a little bit of ink on that center line and the two edges. I'm just using a medium blue ink and then some dark blue enamel dots three on each side. That completes the base of my ship, and now I'm going to move on to the upper half. And the first thing I'm going to do is just add some clear packing tape to some white cardstock so that the windows that I cut for my cruise ship will be shiny. To cut those windows, I'm going to use the set of four window backers out of our tiny house pop-up. And since I need five windows, I'll have to cut that twice. Now I'm grabbing shape dies out of the sets I've already been using. So the smallest rectangle out of the rectangles and labels crosshatch, the larger of the two stitched rectangles from the flip frame pop-up, and then the tiniest little hexagon out of the hexagons set. And I'm cutting all three of those pieces out of a blue cardstock. Then I decided to ink those pieces with some medium blue ink. On that rectangle, I didn't have to go all the way to the bottom because I knew a lot of it would be covered up. The Distress Ink color that I'm using is called Faded Jeans. And now I'll join these three pieces together by gluing the long rectangle horizontally across the top of the stitched one and then the small hexagon behind that. Then I need those five white rectangles that are going to be the windows, spacing them evenly across the piece. And then my big version of the cruise ship is completed by gluing those two pieces together. To add this to the card, I just add my adhesive to the bottom edge of the cruise ship, and then I attach that behind the waves. Now I need to go as far out to the right as I can. That's a tall item, and I want it to clear the card as it comes down. Obviously, I have to keep it in the card, but you can see I've got it pretty far to the right. I didn't think about what the back of the cruise ship would look like, but you do see it a lot as the card opens and closes. So I decided to go ahead and decorate the back with similar pieces. I didn't go the full decoration, but just the main pieces on the back so that it would look a little cleaner as the card opens and closes. 
The Cruise Charms die set includes a greeting, Bon Voyage, and I've cut that twice and layered them together, a little bit offset for a drop shadow. And then I'm only going to use adhesive on the bottom edge so that I can attach that to the pop-up on the left side of the card. And I'm keeping that out far to the left side of those waves. And that way I know that as the card closes, the ship will come down first and then the greeting will go over the top and collapse. So I don't want it to be further in because I'll probably create a catch point on the edge of the ship. I'm not showing the assembly of the cruise charms because they have their own video, but I will link that at the end of this one. I assembled a life preserver and glued it behind the greeting. And then I just need to give it a check, make sure that I didn't create any catch points. Then I assembled an anchor and glued it to that left pop-up. Now again, I had to choose a location where it would not create a catch point. Okay, for the rest of the interior decoration, I took the two stitch rectangles out of the flip frame pop-up and nested them together so that it would cut a stitched rectangle and a frame. And then I am decorating the inner rectangle with the tropical scene die, trimming off any excess, and then adding that frame around the perimeter. And then for the right one, I added in a white rectangle as a place to sign the card. And then a little starfish out of the tropical scene. Okay, and all that's left is to glue those inside the card. So I'm going to glue the place to sign the card on the right, my little island oasis on the left, another one of those life preservers. And here's where I made the mistake that I've been telling you not to make, which is I didn't even think about those dimensional palm trees hitting my cruise ship when it closes. And it is just perfectly aligned. So what I'm going to do is add just a little forward bend in the corner of my cruise ship, and that is going to solve the problem. It will come down and just slide against the palm tree instead of catching on that edge. So definitely watch the placement of dimensional embellishments when you've got lots of moving parts. And to make it look like a design choice, I'll just bend the outside corner as well. Once again, I was seeing a lot of the back of that life preserver, so I decided to just glue another one to the back so that that would clean it up and make it look pretty as the card opens and closes. My favorite way to make card fronts is just to take my leftover materials, the same die sets, and just make a simple lead in. So the frames and rectangles from the flip frame, plus the waves edger from the tropical scene. And then I've got those cruise charms, the cruise ship itself in the frame. And then I've got the other three charms strung onto a twine hanging off of that frame. And then I'm building this entire card front on that large crosshatch rectangle from the rectangles and labels crosshatch, gluing down my charms into place. And then I just have to glue my finished card front to the front of the card. And that finishes out my 5x7 double flip frame pop-up cruising card. That's pretty low profile, so I would think you could mail it for a single stamp in an A7 envelope. But that's also a very generic technique, so certainly try that double flip frame with some other themes. Speaking of cruising, I am going to be an instructor on a crafting cruise out of Galveston in February 2024, so I will put the link in the description box below. I will also add the link to the blog post, so this is a designer challenge. That means our design team has also taken on the vacation theme. You will find wonderful inspiration by following the link to that blog post. Thanks for watching. If you click on the website link, you'll go to karenberniston.com where you can purchase these dies as well as find links to our other social media accounts. You can subscribe to this YouTube channel and check out some of my other videos. Thanks so much for watching and I'll see you next time.